the violin is not just a one trick pony. You can do whatever you want with it as long as you have that drive and commitment and you can play anything. Once you start messing with that and once you find a sound, that sound becomes yours and it's a great feeling when you have something that is that meaningful and that people can listen and say, oh, that's David Sutton. Well, when I first got to McNally, I had kind of a skewed idea of what string players are supposed to do and what they're supposed to play. Because um, I played classical, I played some jazz, but I, I never really had thought of the idea of being able to do alternative or rock or R&B or funk until I got here. And as soon as I got involved in that world, I knew that I just had to keep going and I wasn't going to look back. Um, and so I really just put myself into this new position of creating new music and it's very much shaped my idea of what the violin can do and where it can go and what its role is in contemporary music. I started looking more into electric violin um, and to pedals at the same time and then realized that I could do all of this instrumentation by myself by uh, utilizing a looper and recording myself live. Um, and so I was able to do violin, cello, viola, double bass, um, steel drums. <laughs> could do almost anything that I wanted to. Some violinists like to mess with distortion. So there's, I have that. I have one that is an octaver, so it allows me to become a uh, cello, actually. So, just normal violin tone and then cello. I have another thing on here, too, that lets me go another octave down. So then I go from cello to bass, essentially. And of course that sounds great for bowed stuff too. Now we're getting to my favorite effects here. Uh, first one is delay. It's just a nice tone, it really, I love it. I use delay for mostly everything that I do. Reverb is essential because you're a violinist, you're going to be playing in concert halls and then go to a rock club uh, where there's not too much reverb. So to be able to have that in a box and have it be really good is just awesome. So here's without. So it's really dry, there's not so much, but then you put this on and it's just instant reverb and it's just beautiful. And one of my favorite settings on here is this thing called Shimmer. Um, I started really getting into it when I saw Dosh at the Minnesota State Fair two years ago. Um, the drummer for Andrew Bird, and they both do their own different styles of looping, um, whether it's Andrew Bird stuff or Dosh on his own, uh, and that really got me compelled to try to do the same thing. Um, and in terms of my more recent work, I've always been a huge fan of uh, film composers, Hans Zimmer, um, James Horner, as well as uh, my favorite bands, Mute Math, and. Um, just a lot of that alternative edge um, really grabbed me, and so I tried to kind of find the in-between of all of that, and it's kind of what ended up happening. The album that we came out with a couple weeks ago is um, entitled The Vertical Horizon, and it's actually a concept album on Alzheimer's that from beginning to end kind of 
is a musical interpretation of what it's like to lose your memory and also kind of inadvertently um, how families kind of feel while that process is going on as well. Without lyrics, I can't, you know, I can't convey with words what I'm saying, but I feel like I can do just as much, if not more, by using the music to describe those feelings and emotions and circumstances. This is probably one of the greatest learning environments that I've ever seen. I've done summer music camps, I've done clinics, I've seen other colleges, and out of all of them, this school beats them all. Um, there's just an openness here. There's an acceptance for whatever genre you're doing, for whatever instrument you are. There's, not, there's no discrimination of instruments. And everyone wants you to play for everything because they're just trying their own stuff too. And in that way, it becomes the perfect learning environment. I can honestly say that I wouldn't be able to find this anywhere else. I wouldn't feel as confidently as I do about composing. I wouldn't feel as confident about booking myself by being a production person and hearing the right things, by being able to negotiate contracts, and especially not to be able to perform the way that I do. I'd like to be somewhere with my band Electric String Quartet, whether that be regionally or nationally or, you know, big dreaming internationally. Um, I'd love to be doing something with them and I really love film scoring and so I hope to be able to break into that and just, you know, trying to change how people view the violin and just give people something new to listen to.